quick wake up, darling. There's more CM Punk drama. Nah. Now, nah. nah. It's worth pointing out. I said this with Adam yesterday. All in was great. Oh yeah, right. Yes. Wembley. What a what a from from my vantage point, it was fantastic. From yours, I imagine especially so. It was fantastic. Yes. And we'll get into that in a minute. But mm. there is some behind the scenes stuff that has uh, very much taken centre stage since that fantastic event. Uh, now, bring us up to speed, Jack. Um, so have we collated news from various sites here? I suppose. Yeah. Right, okay. So so just I think we just read it paragraph by paragraph by paragraph by paragraph by paragraph. Well, here we go. Strap in. Um, more. All details have emerged regarding the backstage incident at All In involving CM Punk, and it appears that CM Punk's relationship with AEW is more strained than ever. We already know, of course, that he took exception to the comments made by Jack Perry uh, during his match against Hook on the Zero Hour pre-show. This led to a backstage incident between the two that everybody has now learned got physical. Uh, it was apparently broken up by Samoa Joe and others in the arena. Uh, according to reports by the Wrestling Observer, this occurred in gorilla position at Wembley Stadium, and that the scuffle between the two caused monitors <laughs> to fall onto toe Tony Khan. By God! <laughs> <laughs> it is now. Whilst it's a very funny visual, yeah. uh, it is. It just paints just an even worse picture of what's occurring here. So, uh, the gorilla position behind, uh, just as you walk out onto the stage, from numerous reports, it's quite a wide area. So for them to be fighting near, like the the setup is, yeah. uh, it would have been. Would have. Would you've had to. You'd have to go right across there to do it. And uh, Tony Khan getting some of the crossfire in that uh, is not a good look at all. Do you, th do you think even when wrestlers are in a real fight they're such pros that they ha they have to work in the direction of the most fascinating outcome like, <laughs> if, the hard if there's a table you know they're going to end up battling near the table <laughs> if the boss is there whoa, you, know. you just, i think you're just going to autopilot yeah, 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 yeah. this will be this will be a good bit to end on <laughs> and then you and then once you win the fight you stand up and you wait for your theme music to start yes. it also it also i think places extra expectation upon tony Khan more than more than even last year during all out and the whole thing there the brawl out as it's been now dubbed uh, because he wasn't there when that all went on. He was at the press conference, obviously, at the time it all out. Where, where is he? Because you, I remember security like rushing. We saw someone like rush off. Yes. But Tony wasn't there, so I guess he could always claim, "Well, I'm just getting secondhand information from everybody." He was. He had a literally a front row seat to well, this one. Well, yes and no, because House of Wrestling ah. have been able to independently confirm that Tony Khan was indeed in the area when the incident occurred, and you know, with the monitors and such. However, he may not have seen the actual altercation. Oh. Take what? place. How can you not see it? I just dropped my glasses. Hang on. <laughs> Watch out for those monitors, Tom. It's like Mr. Magoo just going, oh, I'm going to look over here for a second. I don't understand. And I'm back. What's going on here? A lot of people have now been, this is that, that, that added element there, as Tom said, is from House of Wrestling. That's Nick Hausman, isn't yes. it? And now a lot of people are, and, and, and we're not saying this at all because we don't know, but a lot of people are seeing him as kind of almost. Um, representing the punk friendly point of view in this in this argument I but also right I know I, you know we make silly funny jokes about it but I kind of get when like if if you're looking at the monitor I'm just playing devil's avocado here looking at the monitor and you've got your headphones on so you're kind of going alright call this do that looking at that and then you kind of, because from what we gather, yeah, the whole true. thing happened very quickly. That's true. So all of a sudden, someone's banged into your table yeah. and a monitor's fallen on you and you see two guys scuffling. So you probably wouldn't know. Maybe not know how it started. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah right, so there is you. something to be said, which, and, and, and House of Wrestling goes on to say, this is probably why there is an, an internal investigation taking place okay. because it's still com not completely clear, even though Tony was, Tony got a little bit of the, the crossfire from it. Yeah. Uh, that w what actually went on, went on. <laughs> We've, uh, we've jumped across from the Observer to House of Wrestling and now on to Sean Ross Supper Fightful. Everybody's getting involved. Everyone's it's been a real, involved. This one's been a real team effort from the wrestling <laughs> media world. Uh, and uh, you know what? Fair play to everyone. Thanks, for everybody. Uh, Sean Ross Supper Fightful reported yesterday uh, that could, because numerous sites have reported that CM Punk and Jack Perry have been suspended because of this. Sean Ross Supper then reporting Punk has not been informed of a suspension by AEW. Then Nick Hausman, House of Wrestling, added, I believe that Punk was informed of the suspension. I'll put it that way. With... Okay, <laughs> but, uh, with speculation, uh, this is just general speculation that the news came not from Tony Khan, but from Punk's legal team. They told him that he'd been suspended, which would imply that Tony didn't tell him directly. He got, he told his legal team and they told him, which, which looks like bad news, I think, for CM Punk. The fact that Tony didn't message him and go, mate, you're suspended. He went, right, 
I'm telling his legal team. Well, the vibe is that there's been no con no conversation between CM Punk and Tony Khan since All In for reasons that we're going to get to in this video very shortly. But there were other reports that came out of another backstage incident uh, behind the scenes at All In at Wembley, one involving CM Punk and Miro. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful breaks this one down, and he says, from the Miro side of things, which wasn't Mira directly, who, by the way, quote tweeted Wrestle Purist aggregation of Punk's side of the Perry situation, saying not true. Very clearly, he wasn't keen on Punk's side of things, but they had an interaction after Punk's match. It was backstage, either in the training room or somewhere. Mira asked how Punk was doing. Punk said something like, okay, you want to fight me too? As a joke. I believe Miro, also jokingly, from what I heard, apparently was like, okay, let's take it outside. And Miro said something like, how about we take it to the ring? Uh... And that's how it was all explained to me by sources that lean definitely each way. They giggled about it and I guess walked off, says Sean Ross Sapp. But it is two guys who are very clearly willing to fight human beings <laughs> and also sentence. have been known to make or joke or two. So you may have heard stuff about a, a, a disruption between CM Punk and Miro. From what we can gather, that's just a little bit of bant backstage. It seems like it might have been. And, and, and uh, Miro always strikes me as somebody who... Likes a bit of bant. Doesn't, yeah, it really has not a care in the world when this sort of thing's going on. <laughs> uh, this was originally reported as if Miro had kind of jumped in and Punk had um, threatened to fight him as well. But this now seems like very fair reporting where it's it's not, it's the opposite of sensationalizing it. It's actually saying like, no, this is, it may have just all been in jest. Um, people did, it was, it was said that Punk was less, like people were saying, oh, it's funny how Punk didn't get Miro in a headlock, even though he was happy to get Jungle Boy in a headlock. What's the difference between Jungle Boy and Miro? But I, if this was all in jest, then fair enough. <laughs> also, Miro's um, massive. That's, yeah, there we go. Miro's yeah, a huge guy. That's um, it. But PW Insider reported as well that Miro oh, and Punk... This, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. I was going to say, I, I thought I'd missed that paragraph off, but thank you for... Oh, sorry. PW Insider also reported uh, earlier that Miro and Punk travelled to Wembley together in the same car, along with Brody King, which would suggest that they're on good terms. I have a little personal addition to this. Oh. I met several people people over the weekend. I met lots of, thank you to everybody who said hello, by the way. It was a wonderful time. Uh, I remember some people saying that they'd seen uh, Punk and Brody hanging out together, so that checks out. Uh, just like walking around before the show and stuff. Uh, but Miro, um, we saw as well, but he was on his own at the time, so. You know, but Punk and Brody, they are pals, it seems. Miro, possibly pals as well. <laughs> That's my addition. Uh, he's also pals with uh, our Luke and Pierce from the channel because they got a picture with him. Ah, it's a lovely was, picture. Miro's just, he seems like such a chilled out guy. He was just sauntering down the street and just people would come over and go, can I have a picture? And he'd go, yes. And then carry on sauntering mm -hmm. after he'd taken it. He seemed like a nice man. But it, didn't we also hear that CM Punk had to get like trains and stuff? Yes, unless he got a, unless he got a train into London and then <laughs> Miro and Kevin picked him up. No, well, well, I, Hop I, believe, in. I think it seems it seems to be that that Punk had to get a, a tube. He had to get his own, make his own way from the airport to right. to the area. Okay. But then on the day of the show, it seems like they travelled by car from their hotel to the arena. With you, yes, but no, the train stuff seems absolutely true. There's pictures of Punk on the tube looking like he's putting a brave face on to be fair he could have been, i would have guessed he would have been more angry than he looks in the picture yeah i um, mean i i would have been livid to be fair <laughs> yes <laughs> it's worth pointing out, it's worth pointing out that you know all these stories that come out with punk often it's the whole well the common denominator in all your mistakes is yourself and punk seems to be the one in all of these fights surely he is at least somewhere he's got to be the main part of the blame but at the same time that's kind of inexcusable for a promotion of that size to not pick up someone from the airport. Could you imagine? Could you imagine for Money in the Bank had Roman Reigns landed at the airport and they went, ah, oh, just get the tube, mate. Yeah, it's Could it's, you it's imagine? Un, it's kind of unheard of. You hear it, we've both worked in, in like the indie wrestling scene and stuff. And, you, and I always insist on a limo and a private jet. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and that's just every day in the year. Don't die, Bowers. <laughs> um, but we, it's often known that small promotions will often mess up hotel bookings or mess up travel or whatever uh, and it's often laughed about by other people you go have you seen the state of that promotion or mm. whereas aw doing it is in it's insane it's crazy some logistical now, uh, hiccup well apparently and he's removed aw travel coordinator or whatever from his twitter bio now but apparently the person who had that in his bio previously is a friend of the young bucks and uh, had been liking anti cm punk tweets in the build-up to this event oh yeah but if that's happened Tony, you've got to get a handle on all of this. Well, it's that's, not good. If, if that is what we think it is, then that's 
appalling conduct. Yeah. Regardless of whichever side yeah, yeah. of this particular fence you sit on, that's yeah. grim conduct. If that is the case. Speaking of Did Tony you, Khan, you just too sweet there. Bullet club for life. Oh no! <laughs> Tom's confirmed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's an elite cuck. No, God you, damn it! No, you're more. You're the. You're the bullet. You're Jay White now. They're cool again. <laughs> Always been a bit of Juice Robinson. Yeah, me. yeah, of course. Uh, right, so it's speaking of Tony Khan, PW Torch adds the following Punk confronted TK in front of others, and then in his locker room, in what has been characterized as a heated, intense manner. And at one point, according to three sources who have heard about the situation, told Khan he quit and chewed out Khan with harsh phrasing. Now, harsh phrasing have heard that Punk said he felt like he was working at a zoo. But there are other interpretations of exactly what was exchanged. I think the key one there is Punk saying, I'm done, see ya. Yeah, threatening to quit. Uh, although the fact that he's now been suspended would suggest that he didn't quit on the spot. Maybe it was something said in the heat of the moment. He obviously wrestled his match at Wembley as well. Um, but it's certainly... a uh, a worrying and inflammatory thing to say to your boss. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't seem to bode well for the relationship between that and Tony Khan. When we couple this story with what we said just before as well about Punk uh, finding out via his own legal team that he'd been suspended, it may be that there's been a total breakdown in communication between himself and Tony Khan. Plus, also, if it was a zoo, that would make Tony Khan Bob Fossil. <laughs> <laughs> and the Zooniverse. And, uh, yes, <laughs> and, uh, and it would make CM Punk his little baby buggy bumper. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, PW Torch uh, adds a little extra to their reports uh, at the conclusion of all of this as well, don't they? Yes, they do. Although before that, I should mention that Brian Alvarez reported that FTR oh, and the Young Bucks were asked if they could go on first on the show, but reportedly said, no, we're not ready yet. We, we, we thought we had longer to prepare our match. Uh, the trio's match was then asked if they could go on first instead, which was the, the Kenny and Takeshita and, and all the guys. And they said, apparently, like, I guess we could. But then it, it all got sorted and Punk and Joe did have their match. I read somewhere, maybe on Reddit or something, that apparently Joe was angry because obviously he would be because he's like well what about my big match at Wembley that I was like, yeah I want my Wembley yeah, moment just because you can't control yeah. yourselves but then it turned then they you know maybe because I, I, I don't want to cast too much speculation on this but Punk and Joe are good friends they've gone back many years haven't they uh, um, maybe if Punk was meant to be wrestling someone who wasn't one of his best mates in wrestling it wouldn't have ended up that way but maybe he kind of thought Oh, it's, my, it's my pal, we've got to go out and do it. Which, which you know... Cooler heads prevail. I mean, I, what I will say is, and this is... It's crazy that given all this had gone on beforehand, their match was really enjoyable. <laughs> they went out and had a really good match. Whereas if... How, how can you do that? Have that such a heated moment and then remember all the things you had to do and go out and have a great match? It's bizarre. It's a bizarre situation. Well, it's one of those, isn't it? I think when, you know... If you you're you know the key being you know this is a, this might be a bit of a, a juxtaposition the key is the professional wrestler well yeah and if you know you know in, if you go out there to do the job it's not the audience's fault that that's happened behind the scenes it's not the it's not Wembley the Wembley crowd's fault to go right I've just got to well, put a pin in that for now yeah you know in the same way that you know a loving partner you may do something to annoy them and they'll put a pin in it sometimes for days. <laughs> Carry on like normal. Oh my goodness. Is everything all right? <laughs> everything is fine. Oh, okay. It's fine now. Um, PW Torch. <laughs> Nothing well. went on, by the way. That's yeah, a, joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's probably shit. I saw Tom and his good lady recently, and you were having a wonderful time. We're having a <laughs> yeah. great time. Um, PW Torch has added as well. With all of the drama, AW wrestlers and personnel are opening speculation whether Punk is uh, looking to just remove himself entirely from AW at this point, and if Khan might be at the same place regarding the viability of the relationship. With AW negotiating with Warner Media about TV uh, rights fees on a contract renewal for AEW's cable shows, Khan might be reluctant to make any big move at this point that would subtract arguably the biggest name on his roster, CM Punk, especially if he has any sympathy for Punk, who has shown a commitment to trying to move on from controversy and is merely reacting to being prodded by others. Now, I think, as always in these situations, the truth lies somewhere in between. Is Punk reacting to being prodded by others? Is Punk the instigator? I think he's probably instigated more than most people would have, but because of that, I reckon certain people might be thinking, yeah, we can get a rise out of him if we try and prod him. Maybe he's getting prodded more because he's got such a short fuse. People are enjoying poking the bear. Possibly. Um, I don't know. I'm not I'm not defending his actions at all, of course, but it just seems like one of those ones where it's so tangled now. There's so many people on different sides and everything. 
at first, oh, this weekend, I was starting to think, my God, why, why has he done it again? I'm a huge CM Punk fan. I was thinking, why has he done it again? It just seems so, so silly. And why would you let yourself get so wound up on such a big event for the company? Then the news came out about him being left at the airport. And I thought, what? What's going on? There's yeah. just so many sides of this that I just don't know what to think. It's a crazy one, Tom. It is indeed, and no doubt more to be told. Oh, yes. Uh, I would the... like to give a big shout out to Aiden Gibbons, by the way, our resident news yeah! fan. Who's, who's, who, CM Punk is like his nemesis. <laughs> because whenever, <laughs> whenever CM Punk kicks off, Aiden goes, I guess it's a busy day for me then. <laughs> the amount of nights that Aiden has sat there with his TV tray in front of a good World War II documentary, <laughs> about to tuck into his steak and kidney pie. It's corned beef. It's corned beef. It's about to tuck into a nice plate of corned beef hash. <laughs> and suddenly, see a punk does something stupid. And I go, oh, hang oh. on. I've got to go, gotta go, I've got to go, I've got to go oh. grind. I've got to go start the computer yeah. up again. I guess Normandy will have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it always? Uh, you had a lovely chat with Will. Last break over oh my over God. weekend. Absolutely, it was at a crazy um, time as well. It was it was just after the Rev Pro anniversary show, so the night before uh, All In, but just like minutes after he'd been attacked by Chris Jericho at the conclusion of the Rev Pro show. And despite all of that, he was still kind enough to invite uh, ourselves, the Cultaholic team, into the arena itself. If you watch the video, you can see. Uh, the fans have left and the rings being taken down in the background as we talk to him about various different things from the match with Jericho, which at the time was going to be the next day. And he talks about what a life it's going to change his life. He talks about some of his great feuds with the likes of Shingo Takagi and Kazuchika Okada in New Japan. And also he talks about stepping into the role of a stepfather and maturing in life and settling down. And, and uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a human side to the interview as well. So um, I'd, I'd say it's up there with like some of the most genuine interviews I've ever done. He was just, he just seemed really happy and grateful yeah. and it was lovely so check that out that's on the channel right now and we'll have all the wrestling news throughout the day at cultaholic.com stay safe love you bye